Okay, ladies, here I am again. I am now going to show you a stitch technique that you all have been wondering about for days, maybe even a week, I'm not sure. It's really easy. You're going to be amazed how easy it is. It uses three tools to get this done. Okay, love this see, little stitch technique. I will warn you that once you start doing the stitch technique, you will never go without it again if it's your cup of tea you will want it on everything i have tried doing other projects without it because it does take a little time when i'm doing multiples of projects for craft bazaars and stuff like that trying to eliminate just those few minutes but it just looks too plain so once you start you'll never go without it i'm telling you okay the first thing i'm going to show you what not to use one of the tools is a couple of inks not because the ink is bad but because the tool that we do use it really messes up your ink pads okay um real quick tool number one haha -ha, your fingers okay <laughs> um tool number two the ink pads i really would advise you to stay away from your expensive ink pads like the stays on maybe your versifying ink pad well you can really tell i use that one a lot only because like i said these tools it really just cuts it cuts the ink pads really bad what i've done is gone to like um our local dollar tree and i'll get like these real cheap you know foam dollar ink pads i usually just buy black uh, or brown it doesn't matter you can use all colors but black and brown just seems to look the best on everything because they come in the darkest um and then i've gone to like walmart and bought these real cheap like two dollar ink pads okay now this ink pad is a um fabric one now see how yucky it gets ladies that's why i say to stay away from your expensive ink pads i just hate for you to mess these up now i've been using this ink pad for probably a year two years i mean the ink just just starts to look gross but the ink always still works okay so let me grab a piece of paper here put this down right here put my foam ink pad i'm going to use for this particular video and now i'm going to show you the third and final tool okay we discussed tool number one the fingers Tool number two, your ink pads. Tool number three, it is called a perforator, okay? There are two kinds because this one, ladies, I think is going to be really hard to find anymore. I've tried locating it. Last year, I was trying to find a few more of these for a class I was teaching because I knew two perforators was not going to cut it for a room full of 10 to 15 women. Um, this is put out by EK Success. It's the Cutter Bee, Cutter Bug. It really does get messed up. It's well used. It's well loved. Um, if you can find it singly, like I did at my local craft store probably about oh, three years ago, something like that. I don't know. Time escapes me. It ran about $5.99. Sometimes you can find them online in a package of three, like it may be scrapbook.com or something like that. And what, what you'll get is like this perforator tool. Um, you'll get like a paper piercer tool and one other tool in it. And I think they run about $9.99. Okay, so let me put this is about two inches in length and once I push out the little perforator tool here It runs about three inches. It's pretty small and here it is See these little blades right here. Those are what's going to make our stitch lines now some of you sewing ladies out there You're going to want to run and get your tracing wheel, but unfortunately the tracing wheel Does not work because the tips are pointed and so it won't make the little lines these little tips these little blades here are, are you know straight little lines okay look at messing up my ink my finger okay last year i went on the hunt as i was kind of talking about last year i went on the hunt to find um another perforator and i did find one ladies and here it is this is the tonic studios perforator again it's about two inches folded about three inches in length i'm going to bring it out right here just folds up really nice. The only difference between the two is this seed, the blades are a little bit longer, so you're going to kind of get a longer stitch length, okay? Uh, the cutter bee tool, um, probably like if you're a sewer, you're going to know what I'm talking about. It's probably like a six, a six, a six, <laughs> a six stitch length. And then this tool will probably give you about a 10 or 12 stitch length. So not a big deal. They both work perfect. Now, the thing to remember is anytime basically you're going to turn a corner, you're going to need to re-ink your, your uh, tool here. So what I do, grab my ink pad, is I just run it through about three or four times and then bring it down on my page. Just like that. There's the stitch length. How easy is that, ladies? Okay, then you turn a corner, 
Re-ink again, bring it around. Turn now. Sometimes when I go to uh, do these, maybe I will kind of get crooked and run off the page. See, that doesn't bother me because it just to me lends to the shabbiness of the the project. So I'll go just kind of go back in, re-ink, and maybe just kind of fix it up a little bit. See, doesn't bother me. If it's too bad, like I was just really don't know what was happening and it really looks bad, maybe I'll go in and kind of do a fun little curve stitch. See? Works perfect. And then then it really looks like you meant to do that in the first place. You know, I always say that there are no mistakes in scrapbooking, only creative decisions. So this lady's a creative decision. Okay, now let me show you what the other um, perforator looks like. I'll just kind of bring it up right next to the cutter bee. Okay, that's it. That's the difference. See the one next to the edge is the cutter bee, and then this one is the uh, tonic perforator. So that's really the only difference. Now, you need to practice this first, ladies, when you start out with this because it's a perforator. They're tiny blades. They cut your paper. So if you do too heavy of a stitch, it's going to cut through your paper. If you do too light of a stitch, you're not going to really see it. So you need to find that medium pressure. I suggest just grabbing out some scraps of paper and working with it. Let me kind of flip it over for you. See, I don't know if you can kind of see the indents, but they're not all the way through the paper. You've got to just find your niche, find that medium pressure and get that on there. But that's it, ladies. That's how easy it is. You just need to remember re-inking several times as you're drawing your lines. It is a little difficult to go around like in circles, you know, um, but it's workable. Let me kind of bring up my little camera here, see if I can show you something I've done here. I don't know how blurry it's going to be there. Can you kind of see my stitch lengths? They're just really, see, it's hard to go in a circle, but like I said, don't really care. It lends to the shabbiness of the project. Okay. Now. I'm going to show you some stamps you all were wondering about. Most of these stamps I just got from Joann's or a Michael's, no big deal. Um, this stamp used on the little fabric pocket is out by Hampton Art. Okay, This stamp, you probably won't really remember it because it was really subtle. It's like a music note stamp, and it is put out by Stampendous. I think I got this off eBay, actually. Um, and then I had like the little key stamp. And, and who is it by? There it is by Delta. Now, some of the um, scrolls that I used, these these are just your Joann's dollar stamps. Those little ones you get in a package for a dollar, clear stamps. You know, real basic. I'm going to find a bargain if I can find it. Now, some of the wording I used, my favorites stamp person that I love, her words, her little quotes, everything is done by Technique Tuesday and it's this Allie Edwards. Okay, she kind of has her own line. You just go to TechniqueTuesday.com. This little one here, it's kind of a small one, runs $2.99. You can uh, get bigger ones. She puts out like eight and a half by 11 sheets. These that you get like a bunch of stamps on. These usually uh, kind of run you I don't know, sixteen to twenty dollars, but just love them, just love them. You'll you'll recognize some of these stamps, okay? Um, and then of course I used you know our favorite guy, Tim Holtz. Used some of his stamps. I think I found these all at Michael's Tim Holtz collection, okay? And then a lot of the other stamps I actually found at a craft convention. But I'm going to give you the website you can go to because, ladies, their stamps are inexpensive. And I am not joking you. Every year when I go to the scrapbook convention, I go stand in this line because I want to get their stamps. Now, these ones, if you'll remember, um, like the scroll stamp here. See, says you and me. This is like a 6 by 9 sheet. It is actually put out by, let me find it here, right here, Heidi Grace. And, ladies, look at the cost of the stamp. You're, you're going to need to blink several times. Here we go. $1.50. I'm not joking you. Now, this company is called scrapbuck.com. S-C-R-A-P-B as in boy, U-C-K.com. I'll put it down in the, in the little byline thing down below. Their stamps run anywhere from $6 down to $0.60. Cents. It's crazy. And they have all other things too, not just stamps. They have all sorts of other supplies, everything like that. 
But ladies, there it is kind of in a nutshell. Oh, last one, the forever stamp on the front of the transparency. This one was put out by Fiskars and I again got it at Joann's. I got it like a 40% off. So it cost me like $8.99 or something like that. This is the uh, Just Married Quotes. So there you go. There's just a little bit of information. Thanks for uh, waiting for me to get a video out. I hope this was okay. Promise these videos will get a little bit better. Leave your comments for me. Tell me what you'd like to learn next. I've gotten a few suggestions. Some of you want to know how to do the fabric pocket, but let me know. I'll be glad to. Um, I really love projects. I do layouts too, but I'm kind of a project gal, so I'll be glad to dream something up for you. But, you know, let me know how I did, and I guess I'll talk to you next time. I'll see you later. Thanks for visiting with me and learning a little something new. Have fun with your stitches. Bye.